we are here with Ryan Joseph, the creator of that experiment that you saw right there. He is a statistician. He has both his bachelor's and master's in statistics. So, Ryan, thanks so much for doing this analysis. Oh, yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Let me play another clip here of the video. When looking at the on the tongue still piece, we have this highlighted spot. That highlighted spot is the only place where particles fell. Now looking at receiving on the hand, we see that I don't have to highlight anything. It's fairly obvious that by a magnitude, more particles are there. It's really good that the notice you have at the end saying, this isn't a condemnation of anything. This is just to show the science behind this. And I, I think it's really amazing talking about the Shroud of Turin, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Eucharistic miracles, all these things we approach with science and that we're really excited about. But the thing that the greatest thing we should have the most reverence for God himself, we, we should apply that same lens and that same uh, analysis. You know, what has been the response from people that have seen this video, uh, I guess, on the negative side? Primarily, the only response I've seen negatively is when um, it first came out, a few people said, well, you're being too stringent. You're acting like a Pharisee. Uh, and I thought that was really odd because I was like, all right, well, I'm only telling you to reflect or that you should reflect knowing this information. You're acting on your free will. The thing is, I'm not saying anything <laughs> like that's uh, like, I guess it's the fact that the evidence is simply just there. And so when you're asking the question, you know, which one drops more particles, that's a neutral question. I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm simply letting the evidence show what it is. And then given what the church teaches, you know, I'm saying, well, you know, we should reflect on what the church teaches given the evidence. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, cause ultimately we all have to make our own decision and I'm not going to go against, you know, what the church says when certain things are permissible. So I'm not going to say, well, I'm better than the church. Like I'm not at all saying that I'm simply showing, you know, you know, when, when you see the end result, which one leads to more people walking on God? If you believe this is the most important thing in the world, your, fit, your, your physical actions should reflect that. And yes. people should see that. If not, then what's the point of witness? Priests and bishops, we just really hope that you will take this into consideration. You guys are the custodians of Jesus and the Eucharist. Ryan's provided a great perspective on this that I hope will guide you in distribution and hopefully lead to a greater love of the Eucharist by your parish. You know, go to any non-Catholic church and Orthodox church, right? Do they right. receive on the tongue? You're right. Like they'll, they'll do sacraments. They'll pass it around. They will, they will pass it around and they'll say, you know, it's a uh, juice instead of some of them. Obviously they're not all the same, but exactly yeah. what you're saying. So it's almost like, not, not to say this is a direct correlation, but with only 30% of Catholics believing in the true presence, why would we believe if it looks the same as, you know, our Baptist friend down the street? At the end of the day, we just need to, like, soften our hearts and think, okay, I believe that's God, right? Hopefully you watching right now believe that that's God. But um, what would be a visual sign to everyone else that I believe that's God? And frankly, I believe that receiving on the tongue would be more of that sign, especially if someone watches this video, right? Say like a Protestant watches this video and they're like, oh man, if, if Catholics believe that's God and it leads all those particles, why would they still do that? You know, they must not believe that that's yeah. Jesus in the Eucharist. Not to say that that's what I'm saying of you, of anyone that disagrees or whatever. Uh, right. but, but that's just, I think it's a very important thing for us to think of. You know, maybe we do believe that's God and we bow and, Maybe we even lick our hand or something like that to ensure no particles are lost. But um, right. I, I think it would have a great impact in a, in a positive way to the church and encourage others to believe in the true presence. Right. And I think part of the part of the problem is the fact that God. It, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying God is the problem. That's not not what I'm saying, but that God chose such a vulnerable state that we actually some of us take for granted, like it's small. It is a naturally small thing that we're being given. And God is present as that thing. And in, you know, when you see these videos, 
I can imagine maybe as another retort is, you know, well, they're so small. You know, some people have that understanding like, well, it, you know, they may not understand transubstantiation, um, which is actually another video I, I have on the Pew Research understanding. But like maybe you don't understand that these particles are God and because they're small and we live in a materialistic society, like me and you are scientists, like we understand science. And yet we are here talking about something that is so small that people neglect it and they trample over it you know, in a lot of parishes around the country. And we associate smallness with importance when in this case, it's the complete opposite. Like it's the most important thing in that building the second the consecration happens. You know, this came as an idea for myself. Um, it was something I ended up suggesting to my priest. And my priest liked it so much that he not only wanted to do it, but he wanted to show it in homilies. And from those homilies, uh, which we did on Corpus Christi, several mm -hmm. people started receiving on the tongue after watching it. Wow. That is awesome. A couple of weeks ago, I uh, was at Mass with my sons, Dominic and Michael, and my wife, of course, and uh, we were kneeling at the altar rail to receive the body of Christ. And as the priest went by and, and placed it on my tongue, you know, my son, Dominic, closed his eyes and opened his tongue to receive. And right. I thought that was so cute. Like, how cool to see, you know, that, that you know, he, he I guess, yearned for that, you know, uh, to, right. to be like, you know, myself. But would, would the same reaction have been there if he just saw me walk up and take something into my hands and eat it just like I do at any other time? You know, so um, and the priest actually came up after mass and was like, did you see that? And we were like, yeah, that's, that's pretty amazing. So I'll make a separate video, you know, just on that because it was really cool, maybe with them, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it's just amazing to see, like, even to children, you know, one year olds can see that something is different about this. You know, right. it's, it's different than any other food, you know, because it's the bread came down from heaven. It's the bread of angels, Jesus Christ himself. I was looking at my daughter. Uh, when I was thinking about it, it was uh, pretty much right after the Eucharistic prayer. Uh, mm. It was something, you know, you were kneeling down and my daughter, my oldest, was right next to me. And she had just started receiving her first, you know, she received her first communion earlier this year. And so um, it kind of just hit me then to do it. And so afterwards, I went up to Father Eric and I was like, hey, I'm like, this is my idea. And, you know, you, what do you think? And he's like, I love it can I show it to people when you get it done? And I was like, yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> like, you know, let's do that. And so yeah, we did that. that is awesome. So just to let people know, all of these were unconsecrated hosts. So it definitely was not done with, you know, the true presence of Jesus in the Eucharist there. So that's an important thing to note. Go check out Ryan's full video. It's really great to see, easy to share a, a super quick video that I hope will bear a lot of fruit and show people that, if this is really God, we need to treat him in the most reverent way. Now, from the, uh, I guess, statistical element, um, were there any, you know, inconsistencies or things that you wanted to share behind it with that being your background? Right. So what I was going for was more of a spatial understanding, which when you watch it, like you'll see, it's, it's very obvious. One side just overwhelm, overwhelmingly um, drops more particles than the other. Um, I mean, I guess technically you could do a, a, a few different types of tests to do it, but I didn't want to go to that level because most people simply d don't know those methods. And so I didn't want to kind of like over you know, over make it overly scientific, but I did want to bring something relatable. And, uh, you know, seeing um, when, when you see the comparison between on the tongue and in the hand, you just see the spread of in the hand and you only see like a little bit, like just a little bit from on the tongue. And that to me was like, all right, this is exactly what I wanted to show. Uh, not to say, uh, you know, you're doing it wrong if you're receiving in the hand, but to make you and everyone you know, who watches it um, have the opportunity to honestly reflect on what is going on when you receive in the hand and what typically happens compared to when you receive on the tongue. Mm. And given that this is 
God we're talking about. We're not talking about, uh, you know, a piece of bread. I mean, obviously the test is a piece of bread, but uh, when it's consecrated, you know, it, you trample on it and like that, that becomes an issue. Yeah. You know, you've seen those pictures of like Jesus on the floor, you know, little cartoons and you know, the, the footprints all over. And uh, it's, it's really crazy to see. I, I don't think I've ever seen anyone do an experiment like this before. So, you know, I, I appreciate that. And, you know, it really shows why for a majority of church history, you know, almost all of church history, we received on the tongue. And, and even, even when you receive, right, if you go receive on the, uh, on the tongue at anywhere that has an altar rail, they'll have the patent. And even, you know, normal parishes that they'll have the patent, even if you receive in the hand. So would, right. were those couple of particles that were lost from receiving on the tongue? What, what were those from? Could you explain that? So that would be from when the priest was passing it over to myself uh, when I received. And the reason why that would happen, um, I mean, if you have really flaky bread that's used for the consecration, uh, that could be a reason. Um, we have uh, Dominican sisters actually from, uh, I forget exactly where, but we have Dominican sisters that make the bread and they send it over and it's unleavened obviously um but uh it's fairly compact uh, so like it's pretty it's pretty consistent um uh, what father eric did before each time i received the hundred was he took one piece of bread and he broke it um to what he usually sees in the bag so in the bag uh of, of the bread, there's typically a few pieces that are broken. And uh, as a consequence, he'll consecrate and other priests, you know, will consecrate bread that's broken already. And it kind of litters, you know, on the other pieces of host. Um, you know, I, I say litters loosely, obviously, but the, um, uh, it, uh, so, more often than not, you will have other pieces of bread. Their particles will be on another piece of uh, a host. And as it's being transferred over to the person, uh, it'll drop because that's, you know, it's, it, it's essentially, you know, it is um, characteristically, uh, or I, I guess I should say accidentally, it is like crumbs uh, in the sense that they're, they're just on top or below or whatever. So that's why okay. like the two, that would be where the justification, where the two on the tongue would fall from. It would be that one, you know, that simple transference, because there's only one point of contact from priest to on the tongue, whereas there's several within the hand. Could you go through those? So like, uh, you know, you still have the initial uh, from the priest in the hand. So those are the same between on the tongue and in the hand. And then so pretty the much thing. what you're saying is that you can't really eliminate the the risk there because yeah. it's being either placed on the hand or the tongue. So those both have the same uh, likeliness of particles being lost, which yeah. is why patents are a good idea. And I hope a practice yeah. that will be established across the church. Patents, for those that don't know, are like little golden plates that the, the server will put underneath, you know, the tongue if you're receiving in the tongue or in the hand uh, to catch that, you know, they follow it. So if that piece is falling, yep. you know, those two pieces that you saw, it'll be caught yep. there. And uh, you know, Jesus will not end up on the floor. Right. And then the next point of contact is the other hand. So the other hand touching the, the, the host is a point of contact. And depending on how someone grabs it, whether they, some, you know, sometimes people grab it pretty strong, um, to the point where it does break. Uh, others just grab it, you know, as light as possible and they put it in their mouth. Uh, and then on top of that, you have just the contact between how they receive it themselves. So uh, that potentially uh, could drop uh, more particles because unlike on the tongue where everyone sticks their tongue out basically the same way and you have a consistent distribution from the priest, how someone eats, um, basically puts food in their mouth is different on the person. And so you're going to have a variation there. 
which is why I would actually say like the way we did it was more conservative because I was consistent with what I was doing, but I know other people, you know, how they grab, how they place it in their mouth, it's going to be different. And so because of that, there would probably, I would argue, be more particles. Um, you know, it would be um, akin to basically saying like you have a lab test and the lab test, because you're doing it in a clean environment, you're not doing it in nature, uh, your uh, it's going to be a little bit too clean to what you're actually comparing, what you're seeing around you outside when things happen naturally. And mm -hmm. so I would argue that that's the point here, where because people grab things differently and they put it in their mouth differently, you'd probably end up with more. Okay. So there really would probably be more particles in a non-experiment environment. Right. Yeah, that, yeah that's the perfect way of saying it. Well, Brian, this has been really great. Is there anything else you'd like to share? The lighting that we see in the video as opposed to what we actually see. In person, you could just see a whole lot more. But because of the light and the camera, like there's some that you there, – there's many that you don't see. Mm. Uh, so mm. what's being shown there – and I tried to, to to show my best, but you can only do so much. So Exactly. Um, but, yeah, that, that's the last thing. So Definitely. So go uh, check out Ryan's channel and subscribe. He has uh, videos on the Fulton Sheen Miracle and many other things, so you'll definitely want to hear that. We're going to do a lot more statistics videos because I think it's important to share. There are so many claims against the church that I think are overblown. We will address that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, please like and share this video. Have a blessed day, and God love you.